Welcome to Knowledge at Wharton. This week we saw the collapse of some of the biggest financial companies in the country. And it all began with the September 7th announcement that the federal government would take over Fannie Mae. We're here today with Professors Richard Herring and Susan Wachter to ask what this means and what we can expect next in the world and the U.S. financial markets. Welcome. Pleasure to Thank be here. You. Well, the other day, Treasury Secretary uh, Paulson said that he thinks this whole crisis in the housing market will be behind us in a number of months rather than years. Do you think that's true? And what's it going to take to get it behind us? Professor Wachter? I think it's very difficult to say. And I think it's uh, over-optimistic to say this will be behind us in several months. Depending, of course, what you mean by that, the housing market crisis, which is underlying the financial crisis, is not likely to be resolved in a couple of months. It's ongoing for a year or perhaps more. In part, that's because there is a whole set of mortgages which are going to have a peak in foreclosure after the next set of months, and that's the option arms, which are just coming due now. So we haven't hit bottom yet. When do you think we might see a turnaround? Again, I think it's very hard to say. There is a huge excess supply of housing. Uh, we have stopped building it by and large, but um, it's increasing because of foreclosures. And uh, until you really clear the housing market, I don't think uh, you're going to see a bottom to any of this. Um, they're prime mortgages that are getting higher foreclosure rates even at this stage. In fact, there are more prime mortgages in foreclosure than subprime. Just and this in terms was of the big numbers. surprise. At the beginning, we thought, oh, it's these highly risky. Well, I think it's a, it's a mistake that's been made all along. Um, you could ask why the, the managers of Bear Stearns and Lehman did not recapitalize earlier. And frankly, they thought it was going to be a two-month crisis. Three-month crisis, it's over. It's now more than a year. And uh, I think there's no reason to believe that it, it won't last at least another year. Uh, let's look at the Fannie and Freddie takeover. Uh, for starters, though it may be moot at this point, was this the right thing? Was there any alternative to the government taking over? Well, I don't think there was any alternative. Uh, there's reliance on the debt uh, throughout the world. There are um, governments who are treating that debt as treasure debt. I think it would have had spillover in terms of risk. Uh, there was a, an implicit guarantee on the debt side. If the federal government had walked away from that, it would have n raised questions over the uh, the, the cost of that debt going forward, leaving aside spillover for Treasury, the cost of that debt was already increasing. And the one thing that we do not need is a sudden dramatic increase in the cost of mortgage debt. And Fannie and Freddie are 70 percent of the market. It really gets to the heart of the ambiguity of the organization. Um, it, it, it all goes back in history, I guess, to um, the Johnson administration. Uh, Fannie Mae was a government entity. Um, Johnson didn't like having it on the budget, so he spun it off to try to um, pay for guns and butter. And they created Freddie Mac as sort of competition. But you had this very odd animal that was government-sponsored but privately owned. And so it had this dual mission that uh, really was not sustainable in the long haul. And uh, there's a sense in which you could argue that Fannie and Freddie were, and the way they were regulated, had a lot to do with the whole subprime crisis. Because the demand for um, subprime securitizations came largely in terms of AAA securities. And uh, in some of the subprime securitizations, as much as 80% as of the pool ended up as being AAA. Well, who bought most of those? They were mostly bought by Fannie and Freddie. Why did they do that? Well, because HUD had put goals for affordable housing on them that required them to buy much more in the way of uh, affordable housing uh, than was being produced. Uh, and so they were able to meet that requirement by buying these AAA tranches. Now, apparently, they didn't do their homework to see that AAA wasn't really AAA when it came to securities like this. Um, but it fed the market. It was sort of demand from that end that made it such a profitable line of activity and probably led to a lot more underwriting of these kinds of, of uh, loans than we might otherwise have seen. Now, uh, uh, on the other hand, they have both been public 
quasi-public uh, private entities or whatever you call them for 30 years or 40 years almost, uh, and it's worked pretty well up until now. Is it a, was it really a problem inside Fannie and Freddie, or was it something that was changing in the markets that swept over them as well? Well, Fannie and Freddie uh, certainly abetted, aided and abetted the crisis, but the crisis began elsewhere. And people are um, not aware that we had another subprime crisis. We had a subprime crisis in 2000. Uh, which was much smaller because subprime was a much smaller share of the market. But in some areas, some parts of the country, it was pretty significant. Right here in Philadelphia, we had 20% of our mortgages go into default, which ultimately is about what we're going to see in the subprime market nationwide. And of course, subprime is now five times what it was then. My point being, at that point, uh, Fannie Freddie had nothing to do with the subprime market. And the subprime market grew from 2000 uh, to 2004, and now I'm thinking really non-prime, some prime in Alt-A, to 38% of the market. Uh, as they did that, they uh, outcompeted FHA. FHA's share fell uh, from about 20% uh, to about 5%. Fannie and Freddie's share held steady. Uh, what, was, what was happening in that period? One thing that was happening very clearly is that uh, subprime, as they took over the market, a big substantial portion of the market, lowered lending standards substantially. And this was without the assistance of Fannie and Freddie. That is, originally these MBS were structured by Wall Street, sold throughout the world, uh, AAA tranches all the way down to the toxic waste. Of course, all of it is now toxic. Uh, this was without Fannie and Freddie's assistance. What happened, and Fannie and Freddie were not purchasing uh, subprime until 2004 in terms of their um, investment. Uh, sometime in 2003, they were given the go-ahead to do so. Uh, they had a regulator. The regulator clearly, um, uh, there was discussion of this. HUD and the regulator discussed whether this was a good idea or not, and they approved of it. A, a big question, of course, here is um, do we need more regulation? Do we need less regulation? Do we need more competition? Or do we need, and do we need better regulation? Well, we certainly need better regulation and better competition. Well, let's start with what should happen to these entities going forward. Now they're in a conservatorship, which is a kind of limbo. Nobody expects that to last forever. What should happen next? Um, I guess I would slightly disagree with the fact that they've worked perfectly well for 30 to 40 years. What we've been faced with is this very odd sort of animal that has an implicit government guarantee and it, it reinforces the point Susan made earlier that it was treated by and large as if it were government debt. Uh, even to the extent that the banking regulators were putting capital charges against it as if it were government debt and that's why you see so many angry small banks that bought preferred shares in Fannie that are going to uh, suffer major losses um, because the capital charge against it was treated as if it were a claim on the U.S. government. Uh, now, both the U.S. government and Fannie and Freddie claimed that the guarantee did not convey a subsidy. The subsidy was perfectly obvious in the market, and it distorted, quite frankly, um, the competition in the market. Um, but the point uh, you're making is what you should you do now that you've got them in conservatorship. Um, I think there are three possibilities. I would rule out maintaining them as GSEs. I think we've proven that model is, is deeply flawed and dangerous. Um, uh, anything that's too big to fail is basically too big, and so you need to make them smaller. Well, you could liquidate it, you could privatize it, or you could nationalize it, and we've basically nationalized it now. Um, that's not really consistent with American ways of doing things, and there are really lots of other substitutes for this kind of guarantee. The private sector is perfectly capable of providing mortgage finance in normal times, so once things are restored to normality, uh, I think the right thing to do is to liquidate. If you don't do that, then you should probably split it up and privatize it, but I have pretty grave reservations about that because I think there will be a tendency for them like the baby bells, to, to form again and become too big to fail, and they'll have sort of a quasi-government status. Um, I see no real, in, real uh, need to have it. The model is deeply flawed in another way, too, because what it's doing is encouraging leverage. 
if the government really wants to help low-income uh, buyers, and you know, there's certainly a case to be made that they should, you don't make them more leveraged. What we had was a number of people who simply could not sustain home ownership given the leverage they had and the kind of volatility they had in their sources of income. What you really need to do is have a grant program that will match down payments or give down payments to first-time borrowers. Uh, Congress won't like that because A, Fannie and Freddie were an enormous source of lobbying funding for them all, and B, it's going to have to go on the government budget, and we're going to have to, to trade that off against all the other things we want to do. But if it's worth doing, it's worth doing in a way that we can monitor and, and talk about it sensibly, rather than pretending it's a, a free gift. And Professor Walker, what do you think should happen to them? Well, I think it's going to be a long time for us to consider the pros and cons of different alternatives. Uh, I don't think that um, we know the answer. I think there are uh, serious questions about all the different options on the table. I think there are uh, one thing that, for my mind, two things that are uh, absolutely necessary. One thing I think there is consensus on, and that is we continue to have securitization in the United States that we do have a market where we can have a 30-year mortgage that is securitized, uh, as opposed to what many other countries have, which is a reliance on a short-term variable rate mortgage, which su is subject to, uh, subjects homeowners to mortgage payment shock. So that's on the table. The second is, in a world of securitization, there has to be discipline. And the discipline has to come from market forces or from regulation. But let me point out that it's not the only way to get 30-rate fixed-rate mortgages. Uh, the Danes have gotten along perfectly well for 150 years with covered bonds, and the Germans have too. Uh, now, and there's what a, are those? Can you just explain that? Um, yeah, it's where the um, bank will put together um, a bond that essentially pools the mortgages and uh, sells it in the long-term market. Uh, and it's guaranteed by the bank. Um, there are proposals for doing more of that inside the U.S. At this time, the FDIC is very concerned about it because they're afraid it's going to take the good assets off of bank balance sheets and leave them with a bigger hole in, in uh, frail banks. But in normal times, uh, that seems to be a perfectly good way to provide what I think Susan has rightly pointed out is one of the the real strengths of the U.S. Uh, mortgage system, and it's a good deal simpler. It, it, it has much less complexity, um, fewer fees for investment banks, to be sure, um, but it's proven to be very stable over literally more than a century.